2018 Fiat 500C review. The good points of Fiat 500C. Appealing retro looks. Easy Taos electric roof. Eye-catching color schemes. Economical engines. The bad points of Fiat 500C. Roof down rear visibility. Lacks rear seat space. Boot within the small side too. Odd driving position. Arriving annually after its hatchback stablemate, the Fiat 500C, the C is designed for convertible, is a huge strong selling mainstay inside the popular city car range, offering outside fun thanks to its electrically operated roof. It's not just a full convertible as you can see in city and the location where the body panels mirror that surrounding the conventional three-door version, basically, it doesn't feel completely open when you've got the roof retracted. As a small, urban-centric runabout, it's got no direct rivals. Its closest competitors, the DS3 Cabrio and Mini Convertible, are super minis instead of city car-sized, whilst the Citroen C1 Airscape, Peugeot 108 Top, Toyota Gofen Roof and Vauxhall Atom Rocks Air's fabric tops are essentially full-length sunroofs, with ordinary tailgates in it. How does the Fiat 500C's roof work? Most obvious of differences relating to the 500 hatchback and 500C is the top, having a design that harks returning to the fabric sunroof about the 1950s original. Using the identical body sides as being the hatchback implies that the 500C retains most of its structural integrity, while keeping almost identical interior dimensions, to put it differently, a cozy space for four adults. Fully electric operating. The rooftop concertina is up to first stage just behind a corner seats, but pressing the button again retracts it completely. The glass screen flops forwards unwind on top in the boot's parcel shelf, using the top portion of the top folding up on top. It's a simple yet clever solution, but as it doesn't fold completely beyond sight within a cover, rearward visibility is sort of hampered. And, as discussed inside comfort section, the fully retracted soft top acts for an air scoop at speed, filling the passenger compartment with blustery, cool air that this heating system cannot counter. What engines does the Fiat 500C have? Over the course in the 500C's life cycle, both 1.3-liter multi-jet diesel and 1.4-liter petrol engines have fallen and gone, leaving a rather restricted selection of motors from 2018 onwards. Most popular will be the four-cylinder 1.2-liter non-turbo petrol, producing a sufficient 69 horsepower, even so the more interesting choice would be the 0.9-liter turbocharged twin air pair. These two-cylinder power plants employ a deliciously offbeat soundtrack, create a swarm of seriously peeved wasps held in a metal bucket, and get being revved. The lower-powered version musters 85 horsepower, the lustier one 105 horsepower. Be aware that this 500c's engines are for city use, but sometimes be tiresomely noisy on longer motorway slogs, so think carefully the roads you often drive on. Manual gearboxes are standard, though the Duologic automated transmission is available using the Lowert put 500cs. It's less sophisticated than the usual conventional automatic meaning the gear changes aren't especially smooth. If you need your 500C with even zestier performance, then head through the Fiat showroom floor and look at the greater powerful Abarth 595 convertible and 695 convertible instead. Mild updates to hold the Fiat 500C fresh. Fiat first nipped and tucked the 500C in 2014, together with additional seat upholsteries as well as a digital display inside the instrument binnacle. This was a precursor with a more substantial suite of updates in 2015. Along with tweaked engines to adhere to more stringent emissions standards, there was minor styling revisions including modified grille designs, LED dayer running fires up front and trapezoidal-shaped LED tail lights, that has a body-colored center section. Although frequently peppered by appealing limited editions, the common 500C lineup of specifications is quite constrained. In tray level pop the other run-up pop star are exclusively available while using a 1.2-liter engine, 
while all power at rain permutations come in combination using the more luxurious lounge and sporty arrest rim levels. Latest deals from Buayakar. Fiat 500 Twin RS 105 hatchback. 6,989 pounds. Or 115 pounds a month. Fiat 501.2 Popstar hatchback. 7,495 pounds. Or 121 pounds each month. See all deals on Fiat 500. Representative example. Representative APR of 7.9% borrowing £10,509 over 48 months on HP type finance. Just how much payable will be £250 30 days, using a total cost of credit of £1,483 plus a total amount payable of £11,992. Dennis Buaya Car Limited, 3132 Alfred Place, London. WC1E7DPGB0915105A is usually a credit broker regulated by FCA FRN 667368. The verdict. In some regards, weighed against newer city car rivals, the Fiat 500C is starting to feel somewhat away from the pace, and that is hardly surprising given it's almost 10 years old. However, they have charm in spades and because it's got no direct rivals inside the tiny four-seater convertible market, it's effectively your sole choice. It's not without its flaws, but when you can experience them you'll enjoy your time using the 500C, whether or not it isn't notably good fun drive an automobile. Watch on for full Fiat 500C review. Trio of petrol engines available. Diesels dropped again in 2018. Fast models wear a barth badges. A small amount of engines attended and gone from the 500C's life cycle, but from 2018 it became petrol only, all sized between 0.9 and 1.2 liters. Economical Fiat 500C Petrol Engines Despite being the greatest capacity petrol engine from the 500C range, the four-cylinder 1.2 liter motor would be the least powerful from the trio of alternatives. Mustering just 69 horsepower and 102 newton meters of torque, performance is pretty sedate. This isn't a problem inside city, but expect that it is slow to develop to broad and motorway speeds. Once approximately 70 miles per hour, it pootles along satisfactorily, but can be a bit noisy at higher revs. A sixth gear would help here. Unfortunately, that's not an option. Two five speed transmissions are offered. A manual as well as a Duologic automated gearbox, in the two cases lending the 500C identical performance statistics. Top speed is quoted at 99 miles per hour, whilst the 062 miles per hour acceleration yardstick requires 12.9 seconds to finish. Next up would be the first on the Duo Cylinder 0.9 liter twin air engines. The smallest capacity engine currently sold inside UK at 875cc. It's turbocharged as a way to pep up its power, requiring higher revs to extract the most from its performance. Depending on your feeling of perspective, the accompanying soundtrack is either sonorously characterful or grating, in either case, it's not too efficient when worked hard. The same gearboxes feature here as together with the 1.2 liter but 85 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque it's usefully quicker, top speed is 107 miles per hour, having an 11.0 second 062 miles per hour time. Topping the Fiat 500C range performance wise, keep in mind that even faster versions are available because the Abarth 595 and 695 convertibles, can be a 105 horsepower version from the twin air. Torque output remains unchanged at 145 newton meters, but Soul 6 speed manual gearbox enables drivers to eat more urgency through the 500C, a 10.0 second 062 miles per hour time and also a 117 miles per hour top speed. Fiat 500C engines don't available. Buyers of older 500 CS might run into petrol models powered by the 100 horsepower 1.4 liter developing 132 newton meters of torque its top speed was 113 miles per hour 
using a 062 miles per hour period of 10.5 seconds, but following introduction of a lot more economical, in accordance with official tests, twin air, the 1.4 was discontinued. Two different diesels, both generally known as 1.3 liter multi jets, have featured within the 500 C2. The first produced 75 horsepower and 145 horsepower, a lot more recent edition, discontinued in 2018, was last year with 95 horsepower and 200 newton meters of torque. Light controls, easy drive an automobile around town. Agile through bends, although not particularly fun. Loss of roof hasn't negatively impacted handling. If you're hoping the Fiat 500C will handle with the exact same aplomb to your mini convertible, however for a fraction from the cost, then prepare for being disappointed. It doesn't. Where the 500C's strengths lie have been in urban environs, the spot that the little soft top is really a doddle to weave in and from traffic, in addition to being a cinch to park given its diminutiveness. A large steering wheel as well as a city function to help assist the steering are quite obvious but effective driver supports this regard. Nevertheless, that in town agility is replicated from winding broads, due to the Fiat's short wheelbase as well as wheel edge corner stance, even though the former point includes a negative effect on comfort. While be able to th watch it through bends neatly once you've developed sufficient speed. There's little regarding the 500 C's controls that communicate for the driver about traction or braking feel, even though steering does wade up progressively in corners. It just lacks much from the way of fun. The outlook isn't gloomy, though, and something particular highlight is the 500 C's handling isn't inferior to its hatchback sibling, despite lacking a great roof. That's since the body size shared using the hatch assist the Fiat maintain its rigidity without making use of additional strengthening braces. Dashboard is just as distinctive as being the bodywork. All controls within easy reach and feel robust. Plastics and build quality are fine when it reaches this price. Sat behind the 500C's oversized controls, you couldn't be inside another car in addition to Fiat's smallest model. It's proof positive that city car interiors needn't be joyless, monochromatic affairs, furnished with surfaces that you just try your hardest to not come into contact with. Sure, the 500C's cabin isn't graced with expensive, squidgy soft touch plastics, but there's been careful thought in the design and contrasting colors to restore feel special. All in the switch gear is distributed to other Fiat's. While they don't come inside the off white finish that hallmarks many 500 CS, it's very straightforward and all too easy to use, even though the optional Uconnect multimedia touchscreen is really a bit fiddly for its small graphics. That theme continues together with the instrument binnacle itself, an absolutely digital arrangement is optional since 2015, that has small fonts. One niggling gripe relates on the indicator stock. Theoretically it should be an easy task to nudge this and down for the trio of flashes on the indicators, however in our expertise in a number of 500 derivatives, it rarely works, requiring the stock to get switched fully to right of left for the lights to become activated. Hardly a deal breaker, admittedly, but an annoyance all precisely the same. Few will see the driving position ideal, either. Annoyingly the tire only adjusts for height, instead of distance for the driver, that can make taller drivers believe that it's somewhat of a stretch. Models fitted that has a height adjustable seat, lounge and S have this as standard, are unlikely to seek out Fiat's solution particularly satisfying. Unlike rival systems that raise or lower the whole seat frame, only the spine of the 500 C's cushion drops, setting up a gap between it as well as the seat back. As covered inside comfort section, this tends to create issues when the roof stops retracted. Air scooped into cabin when roof retracted. Ride thinks tiresome on longer journeys. Lots of engine noise at higher speeds. In most regards enhanced comfort characteristics, and drawbacks, made available from the Fiat 500C mirror the ones from its hatchback counterpart, to put it differently, better at lower speeds and if the road surface is smooth. 
You can assist yourself out here by avoiding the largest from the wheel sizes available about the 500c. Entry level pop designs have 14 inch steel wheels as standard, but pop star, lounge and s versions have 15 inch alloys as part of their kit lists. That's as huge as we'd recommend opting for, avoiding the optional 16 inchers, or perhaps the larger rim suited to a Barth badged 595 and 695 convertible derivatives. Of course, the Fiat's relatively short wheelbase, that can help with its agility, plays a damaging role with regards to ride comfort, particularly at higher speeds and also over undulating surfaces. Naturally, that is less pronounced at slower urban speeds provided the highway surfaces are smooth. Taller drivers in particular will quickly realize the 500c's driving position unorthodox at best, and uncomfortable at worst. Sliding the seat back for sufficient legroom is okay, it highlights the fact that this large controls only adjusts for height, instead of for closeness to your driver. Similarly, that regarding above average height will almost certainly want to lower the seat a normal feature on lounge and S models, but as previously highlighted this function merely tilts the back end from the cushion downwards in the seat frame, the head's further away from the top, but there's a letterbox shaped gap with the base of one seat. Fiat 500C uncomfortable with your roof open. Roof closed understanding that seat slot causes no dramas. Overall. The cabin remains admirably quiet at lower speeds if your engines aren't being worked as hard when the pad top was in situ, and the warming manages to help keep the space sufficiently warm. The situation's less rosy when your roof's retracted all the way up back, though. First and foremost, the 500C's heating feels too feeble, even ramped nearly its highest temperature and fan speed. Compounding the issue is that cold. External air is scooped into your cabin through the concertinate roof, forcing it on the back out the top seats, as well as for taller drivers, into that gap where their small of the back is exposed. Passengers consigned to the back who al watchy employ a lack of legroom to take on will bear the brunt from the wind buffeting. Closing your roof up merely highlights how little headroom there is good for taller adults, too. It's definitely a back seat that's best restricted to younger kids. As you'd expect, there's some wind noise across the opening when the cover's retracted, too, nevertheless it's not loud enough to disrupt a conversation held at normal volume, although an appointment over the Fiat's Bluetooth connection is less likely being successful. For standard trim levels to pick from. Limited editions frequently appear. Careful not in order to develop the cost of options. Getting your brain around the typical Fiat 500c trim hierarchy is not hard enough, but be aware at any moment there's often one, or more, special alternatives to select from. Consult the model history to determine as and once they were introduced. Standard Fiat 500c equipment. Starting point for 500c ownership could be the pop trim level, but because of the relative paucity of their equipment, it's it's unlikely that any we would recommend. Electrically operated roof. Electric front windows. Electric door mirrors. Remote central locking. LED daytime running lights. 14 inch steel wheels with full width trims. Radio. Chroma look exterior door handles. Upgrading into a Popstar version adds this kit. Heated door mirrors. 15 inch alloy wheels. Aircon. 50 colon 50 split rear seat. Move as much as lounge specification for any more appealing choice of niceties. Front fog lights. Rear parking sensors. Additional exterior chrome decor. 5.0 inch multimedia touchscreen with DAB radio and Bluetooth connectivity. Cruise control. High adjustable driver's seat. Rear seat headrests. Lending a sportier air will be the S, which builds upon the lounge trim with. Dark and rear privacy glass. Specific body kit and chrome exhaust tip. 15 inch satin finish alloy wheels. Front sports seats. Leather wrapped sports tire. 7.0 inch multimedia touchscreen. Android Auto Apple CarPlay. Optional Fiat 500C Extras. Fiat has an impressively broad variety of extra cost options with the 500C. Way too many to list here, 
but doesn't offer many bundle packages of popular items inside the manner a number of other manufacturers do. Among the true secret extras on offer are, special pastel, metallic and tricot finishes, body stripes and stick-on graphics, 15 and 16 inch alloy wheels, a full leather interior, a wider choice of chrome details for your exterior, Bixen on headlamps, automatic lights and wipers, a wind stop and reduce buffeting, however it makes the spine seat unusable, a space saver spare wheel. For those trying to find value for money bundles, you're on this trio. Style pack, chrome bonnet trim, body colored sign rubbing strips and dark tinted rear privacy glass. Tech pack, 7.0 inch multimedia touch screen, DAB radio, Bluetooth connectivity, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, rear speakers plus a 7.0 inch digital instrument panel. Tech nav pack. Much like the tech pack with all the addition of 3D Satanov. Downgraded Thrustar your own cap rating. Lacks autonomous emergency braking. All 500 CS have 7 airbags as standard. Despite originally scoring a 5 a star crash test rating from your own cap when sampled as being a closely related 500 hatchback, the score was downgraded to a few stars in 2017 if it was retested. It's a representation of how much safety technology has improved above the course with the 500C's life cycle, highlighted by the lack of kit which simply isn't available inside Fiat. Seven airbags are standard features throughout the 500C range, as is also electronic stability software and traction control and lowering wheel spin, but that's regarding it. Automatic emergency braking? Not available. Land keeping functions? Nope. Blind spot warnings? Not a chance. Even automatic lights and wipers are optional through the range. How many ice fix points does the Fiat 500C have? As the 500C is really a strict four seater, there's no middle seat belt about the rear bench. It's not the roomiest of cars for four adults, but a few ice fix mounted child seats will pretty much squeeze inside, although access isn't particularly easy. Very small rear seats are cramped for adults. High mounted front seats, but roomy enough. Small boot, with awkward access on 500C. Its diminutive dimensions confirm which the Fiat 500C can be a dinky city car, that will only accommodate four adult passengers in a squeeze. In reality, many people who are at the very least in their teens will find it difficult to fit comfortably inside back. Best reserve those benches for smaller kids, who are also less likely to become troubled by accessing a corner bench, regardless of the side doors opening wide, one still needs being as flexible being a gymnast to get inside back with any penetration of grace intact. Up front there's a decent amount of space, regardless of the upright seating position. Storage for bits and pieces is okay, that has a glove box and decently sized door bins. Other cubbies are so small, or rodly shaped guess what happens they might are already designed for. Fiat increased the depth in the cup holders as part on the 2015 facelift, but having said that they remain shallower than you are on other cars. Brisk cornering could still produce a lower legs and latte macchiato interface. As one on the smallest four-seater cars discounted, the Fiat 500C really should be a dado to park in tight spots. Despite being small, there's a considerable area of glass, making it all too easy to see away from. With your roof up, the back window isn't significantly small compared to that from the 500 hatchback, but lower it fully and rearward visibility is fixed. Usefully, lounge and S specification cars consist of rear parking sensors as standard, but there's no reversing camera or self-parking option. The transition towards the convertible body on the Fiat 500C compared with all the 500 hatchback sees a 3.0-liter reduction inside the size of the company's boot volume, capping it in a modest 182 liters when all four seats are occupied. Officially, Fiat doesn't quote a figure to the available luggage space once the seats are folded over, nevertheless it's safe to imagine it can cope which has a similar 550-liter capacity for the hatchback. All 500 CS employ a folding rear seat, 
split 50 hours 50 minutes on pop star models and above, but access through it into a corner of the passenger cabin isn't quite as generous as about the hatch. Unsurprisingly, accessing the boot within the 500C isn't as convenient as on its hatchback twin anyway. Whereas the latter features a rooftop bumper height tailgate, the first sort just features a toughened boot lid, so that it is awkward to load in items by using a relatively narrow slot.